Hello, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Comic Book Chronicles. I am your host, Radicat. You can find me at Radicat on Twitter. You can find me at News News Need on Twitter. You can find me at TV Caps on Instagram. Yeah, with Columbia down the way. And the sound effects you've heard come from none other than our man in Brooklyn. One agent underscore is 70 on Twitter, Instagram, and threads. What's up, everybody? Co-hosting from the borough of Kings, representing. Where you from? Brooklyn going out to all. <laughs> Uh, and folks, you can find this here podcast on the coast of the podcast network. That's cspn.us. Do it today. Uh, you can also find this on your podcast perusal place of choice, whether it be Google play, Apple iTunes, like Apple podcasts, Spotify, or the coast of the podcast network, SoundCloud page. Make sure to click like subscribe and make sure to leave us all the positive five-star reviews, especially on Apple podcasts. Yes. Um, folks, you can also find us recording. I mean, uh, uh, blah, 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 recording every Thursday night, nine thirty ish uh, p.m. Eastern Standard Time, with the exception of next week. Uh, but um, uh, on the YouTube channel of the Click Nation, that's youtubecom slash Nation and twitchtv chronicles. Again, please click like, subscribe, make sure to hit the notification button so that you know when we are on live. Smash that and like button too. Yeah. All right, folks. So we're going to get into it tonight with starting off with uh, the, uh, well, it's the finale of the season. We don't know if there's going to be a season two or not, or what shall become of it. But the last episode, which is episode 10 of Monarch Legacy of Monsters. Right. And I think it was a mild surprise to most fans of genre and to fans of kaiju. You know, I know that the the legendary monster verse has its critics. I'm one of them. But I was definitely pleasantly surprised at this show, by this show, at the production quality, you know, the the, the level of the, the high level of production quality of this show the uh the good acting right and actually you know mostly good writing too so uh, i think uh i uh i can i can actually say overall i was pleasantly surprised by this show and when we got to the last episode if i recall correctly when we recorded last time it had not yet released or you hadn't watched it actually both um Right, it had not yet released. No, because I, I I couldn't remember because I think it was I watched the penultimate and you hadn't. Right. right. And the uh, final episode had not yet dropped when we recorded. Okay, so uh, if I recall, at the end of our last episode, I hinted to Roddy Cat that he would enjoy the cliffhanger ending of the penultimate episode because it was definitely a surprise. And then we roll right into the next episode, which is like, you know, I, I, I jokingly call it Middle Earth, and I've heard that before, but it's uh, the Hollow Earth. And that is far more developed in this mini series or this 10, 10 episode series um, after having made a very brief appearance in Godzilla versus Kong. So, um, you know, that's obviously going to lead into, and, you know, we'll have some news on this, um, uh, in a little while, you know, with some thoughts on how all this is going to relate to the upcoming Godzilla X Kong 
movie. But bottom line, though, and, you know, without getting into any of the details, I will say I was more than pleasantly surprised at this series. What did you think? Yeah, I mean, I'm in agreement with that. And we've said it before. It is like, uh, you know, the worst part of most Godzilla slash Kaiju movies are the focus on the human side. Uh, right. In this movie, and what Agent Seventy has told me about Godzilla minus zero, um, minus one. they both minus one. Excuse me. Um, I'm sure there will be a minus zero. I gotta <laughs> suspect at some point though. But um, yeah, they kind of not necessarily redeem it, but they do. They, it is it makes it more palpable. I would say redeem. Let's put a, a little bit. I would, I would say so much. Definitely, this show does because it focuses on the human uh, on the humans, but um. And despite, I'm sure, what some naysayers may have said over the show overall, we do get some bits and pieces of some good old uh, kaiju action, you know, here and there. Specifically, you know, with, with the one we all came to see. And uh, and this last episode uh, did not disappoint in that, uh, in that department also. And I would say, you know, some, some folks uh, have said this and, and, you know, it's pretty much still rumored to me. They say that Apple company got a little bit of money on them. I don't know. So, yeah, right? <laughs> so, you know, I guess they can, they can, uh, put a little bit of money behind, uh, behind stuff like this, you know, that despite their offerings on Apple TV being whatever they are to some people. That being said though, yeah, I, I enjoyed the, um, that, uh, the surprise, although I kind of felt like we were going to get something. I wasn't expecting that, but, uh, as, uh in the penultimate, uh, um episode because that was kind of one of the things that they kind of left on the table it's like okay so well what happened with this character when you know when they exited the screen or when they exited you know in in episodes prior and right. we get an answer to that uh and as i told uh, agent 70 before the show and, and the, uh, the key agree with me uh this show is continuing the monster versus uh penchant for uh taking out a character or leaving a character in a place and putting another character <laughs> in the uh in the in another place i should say right um so that has always been a, f a funny thing with all of those movies um and and, and now tv show and uh i'm i'm still Given what we got for the end of this uh, episode and what it um, what it sets up, or what it potentially sets up, I guess, uh, or um, given what we know already, you know, I am kind of curious as to how the, what what they're going to do with that in the next movie when that happens, because clearly there's going to be something. Uh, well, potentially, clearly, there's going to be something coming out of this that they're going to use in that, you know, that they're going to take all, take in that, uh, in, in that movie some kind of way. Whether it be some of the characters, which probably likely uh, uh, some of them, or not, or some bit of mis, uh, some bit of information that just kind of came out of this, you know, that uh, someone will probably t uh, talk about. In the, in the course of that movie, who who even knows? You know, we probably won't get to let them fight, but <laughs> let let us hope that we will uh, get something just as good. Because I felt yeah, like, I... Yeah, oh, no, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, I was just gonna say I hope so. I mean, you know, I I, I was saying earlier about uh, how. I appreciated that the one thing I remember about Godzilla versus Kong is Godzilla stomping a mud hole <laughs> in Kong. So I'm hoping that we get, you know, they're, they're, they're probably going to push Kong in this installment though, because the primary antagonist is like a Kong seems like right up Kong's alley. So, mm -hmm. you know, what are you going to do? Right. Which also after the last movie we kind of begged the question like, well, what exactly are they going to do? Because they already like if they had saved Mecha Godzilla to now, that probably would have been oh, I mean, we don't know how this next movie is gonna be, but still, you know, it was like I feel like right. they they shot right. that Mecha Godzilla shot a little early at this point. Well, I mean, if you're looking at if you're looking at like the Toho monsters very quickly, you know, we've already seen Ghidorah. 
Yep. We've already seen Mothra. We've already seen Rodan. We've so seen in of terms them. of right, so in terms of the, you know, they're obviously going to try to come up with new ones because they don't necessarily want to have to keep paying Toho for licensing, right? But uh, you know, they might come up with a brand new bad guy, which is which is what they did. You know, a Kong based. Um, uh, uh, enemy as opposed to a Godzilla based one, you know, like, uh, where else do they go? You know, I would, I would crack up laughing if they did, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, um, Jet Jack Hedor. Or... Oh, no, Hedor, oh. the smog monster. Yeah. I would crack up laughing. I'd be like, oh my goodness, the smog I suspect monster. that one will probably show up in the movie and just be up for like, oh, yeah, here you go. <laughs> Because, because you know, I'm going to be in the audience singing "Save the Earth." <laughs> <laughs> that is a banger. If you, if you, if you folks haven't heard that one, that is a banger and an earworm. It is true. It is true. Wait, didn't it? I, I feel like they alluded to Jet Jaguar in one of the, uh, in maybe the last movie or something. Or maybe I'm, uh, or, uh, wanted to, that to be the case. I don't know, but, um, but. Hey, Jet Jaguar, I'm just saying. <laughs> right, right, right. I mean, you know, like, if you think about, like, the Jet, the, the, the enemies from the Jet Jaguar, mo- Jaguar movie was um, uh, Megalon and, uh, whatchamacallit, um, the one with the, 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 the spiky things on his chest, uh, the, the, the spinning blades, I forgot, uh, okay. Gigant. Oh, right. Right, right. Gigant, gigant. Right. I just needed a hot second, folks. It's, you know, we were we were, we record later at night on Thursdays when we record timely. So, hmm. you know, it's been a long day. Yeah, and and uh, uh, Agent Seventy is probably it's not even probably a little bit more of a Godzilla uh, fan. I was I was gonna say lore fan, but de- definitely a little yeah. bit more of a fan than I am. Even though I I know a few of them, but yeah, no, <laughs> it stops at a sure. point. <laughs> sure. No, I've watched all of the Godzilla movies a couple of times. Them, so. Yeah. And and lately, you know, because of either the Godzilla channel and, you know, it being in random places that you can get to them, like, yeah, I'll just see what's going on with this one. You know. Right. And wait, wait, did it you did say Gamera, right? They did do Gamera. Did they? Well, Gamera is like its own thing. I know. And um, that doesn't mean that it wouldn't like kind of like, hey, you go, for, you know. No, like crossover, no. Yeah, it's its own thing. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it happened. Uh, listen, if if Legendary got its hands on the license, maybe. No, wait. I thought it was. I thought, oh, so Gamera is not. I know it's its own thing, but I didn't know they didn't. It was not a part of the uh, the rest of them with uh, Godzilla. Yeah, it's, no. it's not. It's okay. not. Okay, I stand corrected then. But hey. it's all right. Alrighty, but regardless, so that, right? So, bottom line is, you know, like what Roddy Cat mentioned earlier is, we don't know if there's going to be a season two, but you know, we will be talking uh, later on in the show. You know, there is a news article out, and obviously, this new Godzilla Kong was coming out, so there is some speculation as to how this is going to tie into the upcoming movie. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, if you haven't watched, well, if you haven't the means of watching it out, and you know, those three magic letters you know are always available to you if you have the, the means for that um <laughs> um you know i'm i'm sure it'll be out there in some form uh, at you know at some point maybe maybe yep. not uh regardless it's it's worth checking out if you are a fan of godzilla i would say it, and you've been keeping up with at least a couple of the movies uh, in particular, yeah, the legendary movies, right? Yes, the, um, specifically, specifically Kong Island and probably the uh, King of Monsters, right? So, with that, folks, uh, we are going to push over into the books, starting off with uh, Fantastic Four number sixteen. Fantastic Four number sixteen is written by Ryan North, with art by Francesco Monterino. Colors by Brian Reber and letters by our favorite, favorite lettering Paisan, VC's Joe Caramagna. Now, there are times when you read an issue like this and you think to yourself, well, here's a filler issue. But sometimes those filler issues can be the very best issues you read because you're not 
necessarily stuck trying to figure out what happened last issue or 10 issues ago. This issue, while not necessarily a filler issue, definitely does its best to pick up where we left off, but still tell kind of a one and done story. So if you recall, the FF was successful, even though there were a couple of problems there, they were successful in restoring the Baxter building and all the people that were uh, basically time shunted away for a year. And now the FF is picking up the pieces, including dealing with the ramifications of all that stuff that happened in New York and with the Baxter building and the next steps that the family, and I say the family in the broadest sense possible, where you're talking about the Richards kids, as well as the two kids adopted by Ben and Alicia Grimm. What happens to them? And what kind of hijinks do they get into in their new surroundings? And that's where this issue that's what this issue covers. And obviously, one of those things that you can cover, especially when we're not dealing with only super genius children, is school. Yeah. And I did off to Roddy Cat with that. Yeah, I uh, I also, like Agent 70, enjoyed this issue. I suspect, though, uh, um, there's going to be aspects of this uh, story that's definitely going to come back in some way, shape, or form. Because if Brian North has shown anything, uh, is the fact that little things are going to, that, that will potentially pop back up some kind of way. Right, um, right, right. Like that meta story. Like that meta, meta story. Right. You know? I say that absolutely without any kind of tongue in cheek. I really mean that a meta meta story. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, pretty much. So that being the case, I'm curious as, as to the where's and how's of that. Um, and I know there was a story that I had in, well, I had in the lineup, but I, I, I took it out because we, were, we knew, I knew we were going to be talking about this um, book anyway. There is a particular invention that um seems up until a point um to be deemed an ultimate of something uh, and the article i read kind of suggests that uh it could very well take out or potentially take out this the already strongest metal um in the marvel universe mm -hmm. Well, excuse me, the next one, because we know Mysterium's around, and that's a whole thing right there. But we're talking about the one that most people know about in the Marvel right. Universe. Uh, we don't even know if Mysterium's even going to be a thing in, in, the, in the next four or five months. So, you know. But that being the case, um, yeah, whether, what, whether this is going to be a thing that's going to come up, you know, like I said, it definitely should, I suspect it's going to come up in the, in the pages of Fantastic Four for some odd reason. But whether it shows up uh, anywhere else, in the uh the universe who's to say is it the case but yeah um i enjoyed this issue like i said like i said also it's kind of funny because like yeah he's are these are kids they kids seem to you know kids already think they know everything like we were we were all kids once so we think we know more than we think we do and school is taking a way or something like, like like i didn't really you know i you know well, we're not going to talk about the past. Regardless, um, you know, yeah. when when you have such kids as the 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 Richards kids, and you have a a certain pattern of thought already ingrained because of your his your uh your experiences, uh, this in, this uh issue shows as life tends to do that. Yeah, you really are still are not prepared <laughs> for. Uh, school or any other things such as uh, what you believe yourself to be. And that's what right. kind of what I got a kick out of, of uh, in this. Like the comedy of errors, the whole aspect in, in certain movies also, but because um, you could kind of harken back to certain teen movies like Ferris Bueller or something like that where not necessarily similar hijinks, but you know you can kind of see some of the same, same things going on. It's like, oh, I got to hide from the parents and this and that and the other happened because of this and that and, and the other. You know, which is always fun, and you can kind of tell that uh, like Ryan Ryan Oates was kind of having having some fun with this. So. Sure, and having some fun with how the uh, the two kids that the Grimms adopted, 
how they speak. I think North is getting a lot, got a lot of chuckles and laughs from me, mm-hmm. just he, you know, just from like writing their dialogue. Right. You know, so. Indeed, indeed. So. Especially the Cree kid. The Cree <clears throat> kid makes me laugh. Oh yeah, he's he's he was always a. Um... Your terms are acceptable. <laughs> yes. like, oh my god! Right. So he he's always a treat for 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 stuff like that. So it's kind of funny. Um, but yeah, I don't know. There's not really much to, else to say about the Fantastic Four outside of you know that won't go into giving the the issue away whole cloth. So we don't, we're not going to do that. Right. So we're going to push off into the next book and final book that we have in common. Um, right. Avengers Twilight number one. So Avengers Twilight number one is written by Chip Zdarsky with art by Daniel Daniel Acuna and letters by VCs Corey Petit. So uh, I really enjoyed this issue. This is an alternate I believe it's an alternate future storyline, kind of a what if storyline. And, you know, we find ourselves in the not so far flung future. A lot of things have happened. It's a little bit dystopian. It has echoes of the Dark Knight Returns, but in this case, it is the Star Spangled Avenger Returns. Speaking, of course, of one Captain Steve Rogers. And it definitely has echoes of the Dark Knight Returns. So, um, you know, I really, you know, without getting too deep into it, Steve has to find his way back into um, the thick of the action. You know, there are a lot of things going on that I don't want to spoil because I do think it's worth a read, you know, because we find out. And and a lot of things are still kind of left unsaid in this issue. We still, you know what? I, we have to look up, I believe it's either a 10 or 8 or 10 issue miniseries, I think. Mm. Something like that. Because I know we t- we talked about this in a new story. Right. You know? Yeah, we did. And, I, and that was a, probably a little bit a while ago. So that's what I was wondering. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So, um, you know, it's a... Uh, but, but bottom line here is... Um, I enjoyed reading this and, you know, I would actually recommend it. It's definitely a candidate for click of the week for me. It is definitely an, an interesting premise, um, for whatever it is like, um, yeah, age of seven believes it's a what if story. And it's, I mean, for all intents and purposes, it is regardless of, you know, because it's, just to give this a little piece of weight, it's kind of set up in a future. And it is set up with um, not the current roster. Well, not even current roster, but it's a certain set of um, Avengers and associates of a certain time, let's just say, that is not current. So it could very well be anything. Although they, there are some, a couple of things that they allude to in this that could potentially make it like, well, this is a potential possible future, but you know, as we know with Marvel's future, anything could be anything. And, you know, it has quote unquote changed and not changed or been different things at different times in a number of ways. So, you know, having it set up to, to if it, uh, that it could be a what if or some alternate timeline is probably the only way you could um, uh, say it. Or, or the only way you could put it without knowing any actuals, you know. So that being said, um, as as we look at the Frank Miller cover, a uh, variant color cover, if you're watching the video version, um, yeah, th- th- there's th- a character that's kind of sort of front and center for reasons, uh, in this in this future time because of things that are going on that felt to me kind of echoes a couple of different things. One kind of civil war ish type of premise or a catalyst, I should say, but also right. the Marvel's Avengers video game, because there, I feel like there was a somewhat similar 
premise um in a way to to the story that uh kind of made me curious about something but it's not a it's not a direct one to one thing so i can't really put it on that that being said though i mean you know um I'm curious to where this is going. I am definitely going to continue reading this. Um, and I was almost going to say it kind of harkens back to like the, the, uh, the Avengers, the, or the, the end line of books that, that have uh, happened in Marvel in the past, but I don't think this is a part of that either. Mm -hmm. So, but it feels like it's kind of getting, hitting close to that. But we shall see. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I was definitely <laughs> Again, I hate to say it, you know, so much, so, so much in this, uh, in this episode already, but I was more than pleasantly surprised by this issue. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you know, I got to give props to Sadowski starting off as an artist and, you know, kind of going headlong into, uh, writing. I mean, I, I think he's probably still doing some art here and there someplace. I don't, but I don't recall right. anything that I've seen. So, you know, and his, um, his output so far has been pretty pretty decent i mean you could say you know <laughs> somewhere between his daredevil and batman uh um uh, ones seem kind of similar in spots but right but outside of that his outfit's been pretty good writing wise you know daniel Acuna, Acuna, you know always great art most of so you really you know it's not much else to say about that so mm -hmm. it's a pretty good team and i guess that's probably why now that i think about it because I'm thinking of a specific Avengers run uh, where he was doing art. Um, and this is just me speculating. But it could be why it seems m more like a, a what if than a future, future time because of that, because of some things I'm thinking of. Who knows? We don't see. All right. All right. But yeah, uh, no, definitely, definitely a candidate for my click of the week this week. All righty. President Bartlett. What's next? Uh, spin up the minigun. All righty, it is time for rapid fire reviews. Here we go. I ain't got time to move. Rapid fire review time starts with Nightwing number 110. It's written by Tom Taylor with art by Sam Bassery, inks and finishes by Vicente Cifuentes, colors by Adriano Lucas, and letters by Wes Abbott. This is, it's not a filler issue because it does pick up on the current crossover that is also penned or, or written by Tom Taylor, uh, the Beast World uh, crossover. And it, this issue basically details what has happened to Damian Wayne and how uh, Jonathan Kent and, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the current Superboy slash Superman and Nightwing uh, come to the aid of Damian Wayne, who has fallen prey to the Garo starfish. So, and there is, you know, obviously the uh, kind of the origin story of the um, of the villain that has uh, been teased over the last several issues of Nightwing in this issue. So, uh, it's you know, all in all, it's a good kind of non filler slash crossover issue you know i i i i definitely look forward to when this garo slash beast world story is over but uh you know this isn't uh this is not the worst book to pick up next up is uh amazing spider-man number 42 i'm not going to spoil this too much because i know roddy cat will get to it it's written by zeb wells with pencils by john romita jr inks by scott hannah Colors by Marcio Meniz and letters by, again, our favorite lettering Paisan, VC's Joe Caramagna. So we get the immediate uh, resolution, as it were, to the conflict slash standoff that was set up at the end of last issue between Lonnie Lincoln, a.k.a. Tombstone, and Wilson Fisk, the former and current kingpin. Once that's done, though, you know, there are a lot of pieces in this gang war moving across the board in New York City. There is a big standoff slash showdown slash, you know, very much a scene from Endgame or 
Lord of the Rings Return of the King, uh, d- as depicted by John Romita Jr. Uh, on the last splash page, uh, you know, cliffhanger page of this book. That's kind of fun. But ultimately, you know, I'm still kind of, you know, underwhelmed by this whole gang war story. We're always just looking to be whelmed. Maybe overwhelmed is good, but, you know, definitely underwhelmed right now. So next up is Black Panther number eight. Again, something I will not spoil too much. It's written by Eve L. Ewing with pencils by Mac Chater and Chris Allen. Inks by Mac Chater and Craig Young. Colors by Jesus Abertov and letters by VC's Joe Sabino. I won't be able to spoil too much of this issue because I know Roddy Cat will be reading it. Plus, there are a bunch of characters who's, how, you know, how... how Let's just say I for, I've forgotten some of the antagonist characters' names. You know, they all kind of blur together because I understand that there's some supernatural stuff going on here. We do have a crossover with one particular current X-Men. It's not a big spoiler. It's a person who was shown at the end of the last issue and is on the cover of this issue, that being Monet St. Saint, uh, Croix. And... You know, it's a guest appearance. It's not a consequential guest appearance, as it were. But ultimately, you know, the the, the story chugs along. Um, next up is Daredevil number five. It's written by Saladin Ahmed with art by Farid Karami, colors by Jesus Abertov, and letters by Reese's Clayton Cowles. This issue is my other candidate for click of the week, and it's no surprise. I have thoroughly been enjoying Saladin Ahmed's uh, current story with Daredevil as father, Matthew Murdoch. And what I love about this issue is that, one, it's got She-Hulk as a guest star. The guest art by Fareed Karami is actually really fun. Um... And the concept that Saladin Ahmed pulls in here, and I and I and I thought to myself when I realized what was going on was, did I not realize this earlier? I think I did, but you know, it's one of those things when you're reading something month to month that you it's sometimes hard to remember what you were thinking when you read the previous issue. So when I read this, I was like, oh, they're doing this. This is an interesting thing. All I will say is that it's related to. Um, the movie that this uh, sound effect comes from. Oh, uh, what's in the box? So, bottom line, I really enjoyed this uh, issue. It's a lot, you know, I definitely recommend Daredevil right now. It's definitely on my list of recommended books. And that's it for me. Well, alrighty then. <clears throat> Excuse me. As we look at the Wolverine fan cover for Daredevil, um, which by the way, uh, speaking of covers, that uh, Nightwing cover was definitely a meme inspired uh, one that that was probably, oh, really, yeah, that was a uh, that was pretty good. They've been doing that with that book a, uh, a few times, so that's kind of funny. Um, so my first book is Star Trek number 16. Da, 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 da. Um, written by Colin Kelly and Jackson Lansing, art by Marcus Toe, colors by Lee Luffridge, and letters by uh, Clayton Cowles. I almost said the VC, even though this is not uh, a Marvel work. So, yeah. So, this takes place um, after the shenanigans of last uh, uh, issue in that, um, well, spoiler alert, folks, Cisco l- actually got stabbed in the back by a Romulan. Go figure. Um, And thereby causing um, uh, a a chain of events to happen on the Zinkethi homeworld with the Zinkethi and the Romulans. And the Cardassians kind of come into play with this. And um, we we see uh, our crew of the Theseus kind of, not necessarily, well, some of them are kind of sort of licking their wounds. Uh... But, um, you know, uh, 
other ones are kind of taking stock of what happened and there's a secret mission kind of about to happen with one of or two of those characters one of which includes one voyager's harry kim who's uh in this part of the story and um some other stuff that is going on that i won't kind of go into but in true star trek fashion uh it's not a party if uh there's not a lot of posturing potential war and a planet potentially uh ceasing to exist let's just say um and we will find out um how that will continue to go uh next issue next up for me is oh did i not get that book i did not son of a biscuit eater all right um pardon me a moment folks because i'm just going to do this on the fly because you gotta love it but the next book uh for myself and unfortunately i'm gonna have to dig for this one is corporate commander number one of five i right, hear it is uh i'm sorry folks like i said doing this on the fly live podcasting folks Yes, indeed. Normally, I would have pulled this already, but um, I did not get it. I, I forgot about this one, honestly. So that's, there you go. All right, here you go. Boom, 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 boom. There. Um, it is written by Joshua Williamson, art by Andrea Milana, uh, colors by Annalisa Leone, and letters by Russ Wooten. If you are watching the video version of this here post podcast, you will see a potentially familiar ship if you um, are versed in the Transformers part of the universe, let's just say. Um, but what we have here is a little bit of backstory on uh, one Cobra Commander that harkens back to the movie, G.I. Joe the movie specifically, and uh, kind of uh, adds to what we find out in, in that movie, it, it, I think it can be said. Um, because I don't, uh, from what I remember about that movie, um, did not go too far into depth into that outside of, hey, Cobra Commander is uh, from here and he has had ties to this person, this, 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 that, and other. And again, that kind of continues here because you see a couple of people from said place uh, in the, the the backstory before it comes back into the present where Cobra Commander... And we also actually get um, a, another um, Cybertronian tie of and cameo of which we saw in at the end of last week's Transformers book, actually. Um which also raised a question from for that book uh, for a slight reason, but I guess we will get to that in the pages of Transformers or here. We I don't know, but um, as they are trying to do this in their John universe and trying to trying to Transformers and GI Joe together, it is definitely more of that going on in this here um, issue, uh, as well as what has been established in, like I said, GI Joe the movie and whatnot, and making it a little bit more harder meaning harder core or um, I, I would say more violent let's just say that let's put it this way because if you've seen the preview for this issue it starts off with that and then it just kind of goes into the, the, the story after that then you kind of get what i get from, from that and at the end of this we get a tease of a f certain swamp based cobra ally um that uh, apparently cobra Cam commander may run into and or recruit we don't know. We shall see. It's uh, Swamp Thing? <laughs> Not quite. I don't think they established Even that. It's Heart Thing? No, I'm kidding. Just this kidding. is nice. Kidding. Um, next up is James Pun 007 number one of, I believe, seven, but I'm not entirely sure. I have to look that up. Um, written by Garth Ennis with art by Rafa Labasco, colors by George Sutil, and letters by Rob Steen. So, uh, this is another dynamite, um, and uh, dynamite comics, by the way, not dynamite as in, you know, that good, but Hey, if you like James Bond and if you have read any of the, um, 
James Bond previous uh, volumes. I think this kind of takes it slightly back to basics in, in one sense. Uh, because it starts off one way and leads you to believe that, well, this is going to be uh, what this is about. But no, that gets taken care of pretty quick, but goes into um, the actual story that involves uh, an ex double uh, agent of the, the past one did uh, the, the last one that I read did too also, but in a different way that as far as we know. But something from uh, an ex, um, a past agent's past has kind of come back to rear its head, uh, and, uh, and Bond is tax, tasked to uh, deal with it. Put it this way. Um, and actually, that's pretty much what the, pretty much uh, much to say about that. And the the the, um, the book does kind of end rather rather violently, but in a pretty bond life fashion so it's uh interesting for that respect and with that uh that ends the books for me clicks of the week clicks of the week all right well do you have your candidates I know uh, I have my two. Uh, candidates, yes. Cobra Commander, Star Trek um, are my And um, I guess, well, Avengers Twilight is definitely interesting. Enough. You know what? Actually, hmm. yes, that is the case. And Fast After 4, we've already said it's fun. But if I'm just kind of holding it off to a couple, um, it would probably be... Uh, actually, you know what? I take it back. It'll probably be Cobra Commander and Fantastic Four, actually. And gotcha. with, with uh, Star Trek as a, as a third. Gotcha. So, gotcha, gotcha. And you? Well, I'm in between Daredevil number five and Avengers Twilight number one, but I think as much as I love Daredevil number five, I really did, I'm going to go with Avengers Twilight number one because I thought it was just such an effective way to tell this you know, like I said, it's a crossover. You know, it's definitely like a, a cross. Uh, uh, well, it's there. It, let's say it heavily references the vibe of Dark Knight Returns, but with Captain America. So that Frank Miller I cover. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, that, I did get the Frank. I, I personally got the Frank Miller cover. Right. Which is, you know, it's, it's definitely apt in, uh, in that sense. Yeah, exactly. It's obviously <laughs> an homage to his own work, right? Mm -hmm. He's biting his own work, right? Mm hmm. Like no biting unless you're actually biting your own your your old work, right? Right, right. You're just repurposing repurposing at that point. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, um, hmm, this is interestingly tough choice for me actually because I kind of want to go with one way, but I feel like I'm like it was good, but it's it's only as interesting as the issues that come after it. I mean, as this whole series is going to come. You know, is going to um, uh, uh, bear out in the long run, I guess. All right. So, see, I picked up the. Um, oh wait, hang on. I'm going to hold on, hold on, hold on. My uh, my background. There it is. Well, yeah, I got to put it on you anyway. There, you there, go. there it is. Right. So I did get the variant as uh, the my camera picks it up, tries to pick it up. Whoop. Oh, there we go. There it is. There it is. Yeah, there you go. There we go. Mm -hmm. No force ghost issues. Um, hey. Hmm. All right. Uh, you know what? First of all, shout out to uh, Ensign Dashini in, in Star Trek 16 because I, I love that character. She's, I feel like she is. It, it, it's kind of bad to say it like this, but she's kind of Danny Moonstar esque, uh, or at least original Danny Moonstar esque in a way. But I guess, in a way, but she is also of uh, Native American descent. But that that is not the only reason why I say that because she kind of has just that uh, just the same amount of fire uh, as uh, original Danny did. Not saying she still doesn't, but you know she has mellowed out uh, as time went by, thanks to whoever's writing her. Um, but I think I am actually going to 
go with um as I try to pull up the stupid cover again. Cobra Commander number one of five. Um, because it was uh, amusing and interesting at the same time. Because like, okay, I didn't think they were going to even go back to any parts of uh, GI Joe the movie, but here we are. Uh, so yeah, there is that, folks. Uh, and with that, uh, we will go into the news section. But first, an ad read. Our first ad read of the night is for Funko Fun at First Sight. It's your home for exclusive collect uh, exclusive collectibles such as their world famous pop vinyl bobbleheads, apparel including t-shirts, hats, and socks, and brand merchandise such as their custom DIY pop figures, art books, and skateboards. And now the listeners of the Comic Book Chronicles can get thir- uh, can get can enjoy ten percent off your entire purchase when shopping at Funko. To place your first order with ten percent off and to help keep our show free for you. Go to our network website at cspn.us. That's cspn.us. Then click on the Keep Our Podcast Free link at the top of the page. From there, scroll down to the Funko link and place your order. When you get to the checkout, put in the offer code SHOP10 for your 10% off discount. Funko through cspn.us. Do it today. And now we get into the news. Cinematic news. Um, whoops, 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 whoops. There we go. Uh, as we start off with, uh, as we do with some sad news. Um, Batman Begins star and the full Monty star Tom Wilkinson has passed away at 75. Apparently um, passed away in the UK on December the 30th. So um, I Cannot remember. I, I I know that name because I feel like he's one of those ones you've seen him things in, you know, just that dude. Like, so he's like, oh, yeah, that dude type of, right. type of personality. So according to his list of credits that this article has, um, outside of Full Monty and um, Batman Begins, Michael Clayton uh, in the bedroom. Right. Uh, let's see. In the name of the father, Sense and Sensibility, 90, 1995, Shakespeare in lore and uh, love, excuse me. Uh, and a bunch of others. Uh, he's his his credits go back. Um, he's really he's really good in Michael Clayton. Yes, um, and other things, you know. But yes, definitely. right. But I, I distinctly remember him because he plays such a central role opposite George Clooney in that movie. Right. Uh, but yeah, his career goes back to 1975. Almost, I about to say just like almost me, but um, not that I have but a career. Uh, and the list goes goes on because you've he's probably been in something from what this list of credits is most people have seen, right? So um, there is there is that. Uh, actually, wait, does it? I didn't see what do I guess it was natural causes. I don't see. Yeah, it seemed like it was natural causes because it's not really saying anything outside of that. All right, next up. All righty. James Gunn has confirmed major Wonder Woman villain has been cast for uh, the first DC Universe project. So this is the DC Universe show Creature Commandos. And apparently, um, you know, this is going to arrive in 2024. And apparently, uh, Anya Chalotra is playing Cersei. Okay. So this yeah. is a an actress from The Witcher. Yes. And thank you, because I was like, I was like, I know that name, and I know where I know her from. And there, there you go. So, which, given the the part that she played in The Witcher, kind of makes some sense. <laughs> okay. Um, because it's kind of similar. In whose DC is hunting for its new Supergirl, apparently. Um, James Gunn is looking at three um, uh, three actresses, uh, at the, I guess, at the point of this um, article, anyway. Uh, House of the Dragon star Millie Alcock, Lock and Key's Amelia Jones, and Supergirl voice actress uh, Meg Donnelly are among the list, are among the names expected to do screen tests to play Supergirl. Um... 
And it says here, the reason being is because even though her solo movie is a ways off, she'll be making a, a cameo in another film, probably Superman Legacy, like, logically. So, uh, but yeah, there you go. Next up. Alrighty, so apparently the CW is getting a new logo and a name change. Bottom line, it is dropping the the from its name, and it's just going with CW. Sure. Okay. Yes. I was about to say, it's, it's like those actors and actresses that just drop the last name <laughs> somewhere in the, in, the, in the course of their career or whatever it may be. Right, right. Uh, but okay, yeah. Um, next up, though, Echo Star Alaco Cox on Marvel branding, uh, bringing, excuse me, uh, deaf and indigenous representation to the forefront, and why acting in uh, ACL ASL, excuse me, was challenging. Um, I put this article in there because it was um, a, a quite of interesting read uh, because it kind of goes in how she got um, um, how she got cast as uh, Echo in the first place. Um, and uh, some other uh, bits uh, uh, along that, um, and it's, it's more of an an, um, an interview than a than a full on article. So you know, but I would check that as check it out as it is. But um, yeah, if you like that Echo and like that actress, you should um, you should check that out. Actually, I think I just saw her on like The View or no, it was a Good Morning America recently. Um, but I only caught the tail end of that. Which before I hand off the um, the the uh, the next uh, article to Agent Seventy, I just saw that apparently uh, Alaco Cox wants to make a horror movie. Okay. And uh, according to this other article that I will probably put in the uh, the the show notes, um, it says here that she keeps getting offered bad guy roles, but she says that uh, she wants to try something different. Um, and, uh, um, you know, would love to play in a horror, horror film because those are her favorites and loved watching them, uh, growing up. So cool. I want to see her in more things. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but next up. Alrighty. So next up, according to an insider at Marvel, Eldon Henson, who played Foggy Nelson and Deborah Ann Wall, who played Karen Page on the Netflix Daredevil, are set to reunite with Charlie Cox in Daredevil Born Again over at Disney Plus. So this is part of the uh, re uh, reformatting of the or the rebooting and the reformatting of the upcoming Daredevil season on Disney Plus uh, titled Daredevil Born Again. Interestingly, I did not realize this, but the re uh, the reunification, the reuniting of these characters comes after over five years since we all saw them last on Netflix. And I'm like, five years? Has it already been five years? I can't oh, yeah, I'm too old for this shit. <laughs> It's been kind of longer than that for me because I did not watch Daredevil season three. <laughs> gotcha. But yeah, and much to the chagrin of one eclectic um, who apparently wanted both of these characters recast. Hmm. Um, yeah, they seem they are reportedly coming back. Like this is not a you know this is not set in stone, but you know it seems to be on the report slash rumor mill. All right. So I don't know. I liked them. I didn't have a problem with them. So. Um, same you know either way uh speaking of more daredevil born again news john barenthal would return to playing the punisher quote if we do it we do it right um according to uh the the, the punisher or the punisher player he says um basically his there's a quote here i won't go I'll go far into but who basically um mentions you know why the the punisher has resonated uh as deeply and as strongly as he has and i'm just interjecting on myself probably not because of the net cases that use the um be his symbol for hate uh, but i'm not speaking for him but you know his his um his uh quote in his article says it kind of can say it for himself uh but basically i also say he wants to stay true to the um you know, 
the the core of Frank and the social material. So, yeah, and he's gonna do his best to bring that to life. Uh, should it happen? So, yeah. Next up. Next up. So apparently, in a after, uh, during a recent appearance on a uh, Twitch live stream, Tatiana Maslany, who played Jennifer Walters, aka She Hulk, in the Disney Plus She Hulk, basically. Uh, answered in response to a question if the Marvel She-Hulk show would be getting a second season, she said, well, I don't think so. I think we blew our budget and Disney was like, no thanks. And that's basically in connection with some reports that uh, it cost uh, $25 million per episode of She-Hulk to make because of the uh, the visual effects and other things. So. Yeah, that's a little, you know, for a, for a subscriber based show, that's a, that's on the high side. That's very much on the high side. So, um, you know, we'll see if in fact this uh, bears out to be true. But it seems more likely that it is true. At least that's my opinion. Next yeah, up. I mean, it is. It is. Oh, I've, no, no, no. I was just gonna say that um, I've seen other places like, yeah, it's not outside the realm of possibilities, but because of that, yeah, it's the, probably not as likely as other stuff. So. Right. Um, actually, I'll just do this in here. But hey, guess what, folks? Uh, Halo Season 2 reveals its first full trailer. You just skipped the story that we were referencing earlier. No. Uh, actually, I, I, like I said, I, um, I threw this in here. Oh, wait. Did no, I? No. Oh, yes, I did. Yeah. Yes, I did. I put it in the wrong place. I'm oh, sorry. What are you doing? Like, no, yeah. no, 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 no. I put it in the wrong place. But either way, I'll, you know what? It's fine because you, you wouldn't care about the story anyway. But I'm just going to continue to do this. Um, so, yeah, there's a, going to be a season two for that Halo Paramount Plus show that, uh, actually, one, I didn't finish, and two, didn't expect to get another season, to be uh, to be totally honest. So, speaking so, of getting a second, yeah, speaking of getting a second season, right? Right, exactly. After seeing another show that some people liked getting, uh, not getting a third season, that, uh, you know, you know, it is what it is, I guess. Next up, though. So this article, I can hear myself. I guess that's uh, some some computer gremlins jumping in and saying boo. Um, uh, uh, this article over at uh, IGN talks about some of the things we saw in the last episode or towards the end of the Monarch season and how that might tie into how that ties into things that we've seen in the previous parts of the legendary um, Kaiju monster verse universe and what we're, what we may see in the upcoming Godzilla X Kong. So, um, you know, take a look at this article. It's actually pretty well put together. Yeah, one of the better ones that um that I, that I found looking out there. So if I went with that one, um, next up though, uh, yeah, okay, make sure that was right. Chad Stahelski will oversee Highlander and John Wick franchises for Lionsgate. I mean, there can only be one. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I was waiting for that one, but st- but the fact that it actually happened, you know, still. Oh my goodness! It was bound to happen. What else were you gonna say for the Highlander? I know. I mean, you know, I could say, you know, you know, tell them, you know, send them all. I'll kill them. I'll kill them all, or something along those lines. Sure, something. You know? Yeah, something a little more, more wickish. Gotcha. Um, but yeah. So I kind of went through this article, and we already know about the the, the stuff that is coming up in uh, on both sets. M- more specifically, the um, the on the John Wick side of things, and I'm sitting here like, feels ringing it out for a cash. But as we have seen with uh, Monarch Legacy of Monsters, I mean, there could be some good world building going on here that's you know that's not as icky as i'm thinking it is you mm-hmm. know i feel like you like god you can do other things it's okay I, I love the world too but you you can do other things it's okay we won't think less of you yeah i mean we're already getting the ballerina at, uh and a de Armas movie right. um i i have not seen the continental that was on peacock that's correct so mm-hmm so yeah, uh, yeah, it's 
and you know the rumblings of whether there's going to be a John Wick five are, are still kind of out there here and there. So yeah, have it you learned? Watch John one, two, three, and four again, though. I have not watched sat down and watched those in a while. You know what? If I was going to do that, and then at some point would probably happen, I would probably stop at three. Unless, um, if there is not going to be a five, mm. and depending on how how long you know we have to to um to wait for it to happen, if it does happen, put it that. Way. I still have great memories of watching four in the theaters, though. Hmm. Oh yeah, I liked four. It's just that it's like, all right, it's it's starting to wear. <laughs> starting to I, wear no, just a the, there's that one scene that literally got us all laughing in the theater. It was just so spontaneous. The video game. Uh, no, 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 oh. the stairs. Oh, the, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord, Jesus, help me, please. <laughs> yes. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> it's an Aunt Bunny. It was the Aunt Bunny scene. <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh, yes, 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 yes. So, but hey, those things, you know, the, those she's, things. She's not a Bigfoot god. <laughs> no, she's not Puerto Rican cuss. She's a Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that way way uh more than i do at this point so that's pretty good um yeah, there's only there's only a couple of parts of that movie <laughs> yeah there's only there's only a couple of parts of that movie that i that i remember that much so oh my god but yeah like okay. i said you know hey he's making money for him and i was about to say uh didn't you learn anything from the fast fast franchise Right, but I guess they did. Just not the 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 lessons that I was hoping they would learn. Exactly. Learn to go out on top. Go on on top, folks. You'd be better for yep. it. Yep. Anyway, next up, uh, we're anime going corner. Into the anime corner. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh. Like, oh, oh this you. is me, right? That's you. Yep. Bleach creator will be more involved with the anime moving forward. So apparently, um, Bleach creator Tite Kubo will be more involved with the Thousand Year Blood Wars future cores. So, um, so the series is back after you know being really big in the early aughts uh, unbeknownst to me because i was not on my anime journey at that point so the original series wrapped in 2012 and obviously has come back to tv courtesy of thousand year blood war uh we've talked about this series in the news before and uh the new anime is tackling the final saga of the manga and according to a new post the artist is about to be even more involved with the show so good for him indeed um agent 70 i say something real quick check it check one two one two Mm, i am hearing some static on your end i'm not sure why i it, it... Uh oh when you talk i don't know why though i don't know why yeah and i didn't change anything haven't touched anything i mean it could be on my end because of a a voice meter thing but i'm not sure so hang on one second meanwhile in advance of the next story uh, in, in advance of the next story i'll play a couple of sound effects um well i don't think anybody heard it oh, half of that because of what i just did but all right uh but i think the static might have gone away like the echoes oh i just heard an echo yeah, I'm, I just restarted a voice meter, so that you're going to hear that for a second. Yeah, it's a voice meter thing. Yeah, it is. And I don't know why. That's weird. Um, either way, moving right along. Um, so where is that? And next up, you know what? You take this one also. <laughs> like I said. <laughs> Sorry. 
So the Haikyuu final anime film shows rivals squaring off in an IMAX movie poster. Part one of the epic battle premieres in Japan on February 16th. Holy cow, it's coming up. So the, yes. de- the, the decisive volleyball match between Karasuno and Nekoma would be shown on, on IMAX screens in Japan um, when the first Haikyuu final anime film opens. And the new poster for the IMAX release shows what everyone's really here to see, the face-off between Hinata and Kenma. That's pretty cool. Um, and for those that are interested, Agent 70, what chapter of Haikyuu the manga are you on? I am still very early on. I am, it's funny, I was just looking at the old Shonen Jump app. Um, I am only in, somewhere in the teens, I think. Hmm. So very early on, you know, there's like a hundred, there's 402 chapters. So there's a lot. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm on chapter 15. Gotcha. So, you know, there's still plenty for me to read. Mm-hmm. Um, next up, though, and actually I'm going to give an update for something after this next uh, story. But Demon Slayer Studio Hype's new anime project with uh, a single letter. Um, apparently, uh, Annie Plex, the, the production company behind Demon Slayer, Sword Art Online, and Full Metal Alchemist, has teased a new anime with only one letter, and that is O. I don't think it's the big O, <laughs> although that's it's funny that has come up fairly recently online. But this is per some source via Crunchyroll. Um, says that Aniplex launched a new website that seems to be teasing the said new uh, anime series or possibly animated film. Doesn't really know. Um, but the website leads the user to a giant blue background with a bold black O in the middle. And if that wasn't cryptic enough, go to this article. There's a URL to um, to uh, somewhere on Animplex's site um, with um, with a hyperlink that is, I guess, curious or a, a permalink that is curious in uh, name that has nothing to do with O. So, not sure what that is, but I guess we will find out at some point. Next up. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Uh, actually, yes, next up. Uh, Megan the Stallion is plenty of things, but now she has been announced to, uh, to host the 2024 Crunchyroll Anime Awards. Okay, the information comes from Crunchyroll itself. As the company revealed its 2024 award nominees, it turns out the Anime Awards will be doled out by Megan the Stallion in Japan. The event is slated to take place on March 2nd, so anime fans will be able to tune in live through Crunchyroll's official channels. Okay, good for her. And also, eh. Um, so, yeah. I mean, listen, if, you know, like the, 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 the what, is it, what is it, the Weeb fandom is out, you know, out front on that one, right? Yeah. I mean, she is reportedly a big one, so, yeah. All right. Um, but also this article, uh, mentions, um, as well as that, um, that the categories for the event are out there and you can submit your, uh, vote before, um, January 27th in the, the country world awards, anime awards. So get your votes in. Don't be crazy. <laughs> well, we're, t- we're talking about anime fans here. There's going to be some craziness. Um, <laughs> All I have to say is, I mean, that's that's probably that's probably kind of sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's let's be, you know, let's be honest here. Actually, hold on, let me see. Uh, I'm going to click through the site actually real quick. Uh, and if you are on the video version, you can see me click through the site and see. Um, so let's talk about this for real, for a second. Uh, vote today, vote tomorrow, vote until January 27th. Uh, says, wait, so uh, if you're not watching the video version, you can see, oh, so you have to log in to start voting or resubmit your uh, last ballot. And uh, here you see, um, if you are watching the video versions, the list of the categories. Of course, anime of the year going down to best voice uh, artist performance English and Japanese, um, uh, and of course, uh, characters in between all of that. 
So, yeah, best continuing series, new series, best film, cinematography, action, based, you know, that stuff. You can look at this. It's, it's all the usual suspects here. Um, and I haven't logged in to make a, a thing yet, but I will probably do that after the show. <laughs> Although I have, I can't say that I've watched a whole lot that was because I'm pretty sure, um, especially now that I have my account back in order, um, uh, you know, I, I have a little bit of catching up to do to, before I can start, you know, doing something, but I'm very curious to see what their, um, what's in. Actually, wait, can I click through? Oh, yes, I can. Here, let me put this back on. So, for anime of the year, here's what we got. Uh, Dogo Kobo, uh, Bachi the Rock, Chainsaw Man, Demon Slayer, um, the Sword Smith Village Arc, Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2, and Vinland Saga Season 2. I mean, if we were making predictions on that, we, we, we know what the popular vote's probably going to be. And this is either going to be the most recent or Demon Slayer. Pretty much. So, I mean, I like, like me some Chainsaw Man. Um, best continuous series, I'll just do this and we can get, kind of push on. But uh, is sure. uh, Attack on Titan, Demon Slayer, Swordsmith. Um, yeah, excuse me. Attack on Titan, the final chapters, uh, special number one specifically. Um, Demon Slayer, Swordsmith, Village Arc, Jujutsu Guys in Season 2, One Piece. Oh, God. Uh, Spy Family Season 1, Core 2. And Villain Saga uh, season two. I love Spy Family, but I don't think that that one has a chance here. Mm. As much as I hate to say it, because people vote with their hearts and not their heads in these situations. Yeah, pretty much. So yeah, but anyway, folks, um, get your votes in. Uh, next, we're going to move over into the comic book news. All right, one moment. For a second, I thought you were going to do bow, bow. <laughs> um, Spider Boy joins Marvel's Gang War in Spider Man Unlimited. So, this is for um, a, a Marvel Unlimited series uh, and not an actual book, although sometimes they'll put those in book forms at some later date. So apparently, uh, yeah, on Spider-Man Unlimited 19 is when Spider-Boy officially joins the crossover. Um, I guess someone cares, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I have not really been thrilled about Spider- Spider-Boy um, you know, since his, his uh, inception. Uh, it is not Dan Slott writing uh, this Unlimited. It is pretty cheaper. Who has no has written like some um, YA or some all ages um, Spider books and her, her, she's fine. And the art is by EJ Sue, colored by Federico Blee. If you're not watching the video version, so you know, good stuff, I guess. If you like Spider Boy, next up. All righty, next up. Just give me a moment. I was myself clicking through the anime award nominees. <laughs> Uh, the new Ghost Rider has been revealed, and it is a well-known Marvel villain. So it's been teased that a known villain will soon take over as a new spirit of vengeance in the upcoming Ghost Rider Final Vengeance limited series. And now the publisher has revealed the villain who will take up the mantle, the hood, that is Parker something? Robin. Parker Robbins, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting choice. Sure. <laughs> I guess if Doctor Doom can be social supreme, why not the hood as um the spirit of vengeance? Right. Right. I mean, you know, it makes sense that it would be somebody related to a magic element. You know, some have some sort of magical element. Didn't expect it to be the hood of all people, though. So. Right. But you know what? That's you know that's definitely, you know, uh, expect the unexpected. So I guess. You know, like, listen, no pun intended, but the Ghost Rider character has been kind of spin, been spinning its wheels for a long time. Well, that's what I was, <laughs> funny, yes. Um, I was about to say, or nobody cares, which in this case sounds like, that is my my interpretation of it. And, and granted, right. yes, that, that is not, you know, anything. Right. Else. I've been on and off, you know, Ghost Rider for a long time. And it's just, you know, it's not as, it's not easy to, 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 
to get into a, a current Ghost Rider run. You know, Robbie Reyes is okay mm-hmm. for a little while. When they rebooted it with John Blaze, you know, like kind of back in the saddle, as it were, it was okay for a while. But it's just hard to stick with it. Right. And who knows? Cosmic Ghost Rider has had some fans. Maybe this one will, too. Mm-hmm. Next up, though. Um, Uncanny X Men writer joins horror icons for new chilling for chilling new comics. Excuse me. Um, Storm King Comics imprint Dark and Twisted will re- release a horror graphic novel written by Uncanny X Men writer Cullen Bunn, who is also pretty decent at the horror type stuff himself. Uh, that imprint, which I did not know about, is, belongs to Sandy King and her husband, you who you may know of John One John Carpenter. Of, of of cinema fame um which makes sense because you know hey it's bread and butter um so yeah there's um the the graphic novel is called long haul it is a grizzly new graphic novel about revenge on the open road and chances of it getting a movie although i think um no Cooper's not hasn't really retired he's just chilling though um Chances of getting a movie by Carpenter probably pretty high. Let's face it. Uh, yeah. Next up. Next up, Marvel has officially confirmed that Kamala Khan takes on a new code name as a member of the X Men in the dark future timeline of Rise of the Powers of Ten. This is a spoiler for uh, last week. Was it last week's first issue yes. of the of the miniseries? Yes. Right. So, you know, mild spoilers here. This was out last week, but it is, let's say, an homage to both a role that Cyclops played as well as to Carol Danvers. You know, obviously uh, Kamala Khan's first inspiration as a hero. So I'll leave it at that, but you can figure it out from those two hints. Right. I was going to say, and a recent villain also of same similar name, but yeah, yes. that, that works. Um, also worth noting as agent 70, uh, well said, you know, it is a future timeline and not a current thing because this article kind of made it sound like, oh, that's good. That's our current thing. Like, no, this is a potential future timeline in rise of power of stuff X, which is again, future adjacent. I'm going to say, because we, again, <laughs> we don't know how the thing is going to shake out and whether this is going to be cemented as a actual future thing. Right, it looks like that. It it looks like it might be something they're trying to avert. So right. yeah. So, next up though, Green Lantern lore changes forever with a brand new core, um, and this is borders for Green Lantern number seven, which I think came out this week that I didn't get a chance to read. Um, has to do with a, which yeah, I need I have to I have to go back and finish this. Uh, but um, has to do with a potential son for Sinestro. Um, uh, and, um, shenanigans going on with that character and I guess folks around him. So, yeah, I guess he's going to do things his own way. All right. Next up. Indiana Jones and the Great Circle gameplay reveal trailer from Xbox Dev Direct. Uh, so this is for 2024. Okay. So you can see Indian action in the gameplay reveal of the hotly anticipated, to some, action adventure game from Machine Games, developer of Wolfenstein, The New Order, and The New Colossus. Nazis puzzles, whipping a trip to the Vatican, and Harrison Ford's handsome face confirmed. (laughs) I know that there are people who will get it just to do that, just to see that. The game will be released later this year. Yeah, so as of that, actually, that um, uh, direct came out uh, the day of this recording, um, and that is the one, I didn't get a chance to watch said direct, but I saw this news, and that is the one comic book adjacent thing that I knew was coming out of that um, thing. And yeah, that's a, that's kind of a big deal. Bashoon games, you know, people love those Wolf of Downstein games, um, and Indiana Jones, who hasn't had a video game since probably what the whole Lucasfilm stuff um and from the first reveal of it it looked pretty good so you know I didn't like I said I'll be looking at this later on to uh, to check it out a little bit further but yeah 
seemed like it's going to be, might be pretty good. Uh, hopefully pretty good. Uh, um, but anyway, um, Takara's latest Transformers masterpiece figure turns into an iconic Japanese train. Um, so this is slightly feeding into my uh, Transformers fandom because they, I have seen these, um, actually I think there's a set of five Transformers uh, masterpiece figures from the Japanese line um that are already out and they're pretty pricey pricey because you know masterpiece uh um uh line is pretty pricey and this is another one this is called this is a uh, Gino or Genio I'm not sure uh apparently this uh one is an actual um a completely original character so this was not in the um the the Japanese uh um uh Transformers series apparently uh, and it looks like it's a repaint of Shoki, the leader of the train bots. So, yeah. The train bots, can they travel where there are no tracks? I believe they can, actually, <laughs> now that I think I'm about teasing. it. I'm teasing, I'm <laughs> teasing. So, um, so not exactly Astro Train, because Astro Train could transform into a space shuttle. Mm -hmm. I had Astro Train, I love that one. Um, but yeah, and, and uh, as with... Um, some of the other well basically this is a combiner which means it's it uh it's with the other four or five um uh tr other train bots in the line can transform into one huge um transformer which i don't think they have in this article they didn't do it because it just focuses on focusing on this one so yeah next up all right, so some spoilers for issue number four of the new Transformers series from IDW, written by Daniel Warren Johnson. Um, no, no, not IDW, Skybound. Yeah, I apologize, say. folks. <laughs> um, but uh, I got the Daniel Warren Johnson part right. So, yeah, you know, there is a new, uh, uh, an old favorite that has appeared. Um, hopefully he doesn't speak like he spoke in the, uh, the more modern movies. And, uh, you know, that's, that's pretty cool. I, I won't speak more to it, but Roddy Cat obviously may have some things to add because he is keeping up with the series. Yeah. I thought I might've mentioned it last week when we talked about, um, I know I declared, did, I didn't mention him by name, but I did kind of mention in a roundabout way that, um, and it definitely is in my notes. So if you're watching the, well, if you're watching the video version, you can kind of see it in the permalink uh, for the thing. And uh, maybe that quick tease right there. But yeah, um, I don't remember what the catch is that they're talking about. Um, because from what I remember from that issue, oh no, I do remember what the catch was. So yeah, there's some some uh, issues going on in, in the, that book that is uh, causing some problems on both sides of the, uh, uh, of the Cybertronian equation. Uh, and if you know, you know, anything about, uh, the whole battle between the, the, uh, Autobots and the Decepticons and where and why you kind of get a, you, you know, what's going on at the heart of that in this book. Um, but yeah, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles brings back a time traveling duo who can fix everything. Apparently. Um, I have not been keeping up with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles so, uh, book, uh, so I don't know. And this is uh, spoilers for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 146, which I believe is almost, was it about to round out, um, um, uh, what is her name? Kelly, um, oh shoot. Da -da -da, um, the writer of the 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 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, Turtles, Kelly something I can't remember the name. I'm sorry for for that. But regardless, um, Sophie Campbell. It's, it's not the wrong person. I'm thinking of a totally different book. Um, but yeah, ending their run on this, and apparently, let's see, uh, da -da 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 -da, Renette, who is a time travel traveler and mentor to the turtle turtles returns to help them stop uh the whatever's going on in the current uh <laughs> shenanigans it's just timeline of the book and um yeah well i guess there's another turtle that also receives some time traveling abilities so yeah like i said 
don't know, have no clue what's going on in that book, but uh, we do know from the games there has been some time travel going on uh, somewhere. Next up. Superstar writer Jason Aaron will join IDW Publishing's ongoing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comic this June, following the end of the current volume, speaking of, of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles with number 150, as announced over at comicbook.com. So Aaron recently departed a longtime exclusive contract with Marvel Comics, which culminated in a long run on the Avengers. He's currently writing action comics and Batman off-world at DC and is now jumping over to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So this is a relaunch with a new number one, but it's not going to reboot the entire TMNT comic continuity, but will basically relaunch in July with, uh, with an artist. Mm-hmm. So, and I guess that last article is probably going to play into how that shakes out, presumably. Um, last, yep. but not least, Lionel makes franchise history as Thundercats' new series begins. So this is a preview for uh, Dynamite Entertainment's new Thundercat series that I cannot wait to read coming this March, I believe. Um... I think that's right. February. I'm sorry. No, I'm totally off. Uh, Thundercast one goes on sale February, February 7th. So next month, actually in a couple of weeks. Um, but yeah, basically, Hey, guess what? He gets a familiar, um, weapon that folks, the fans of the Thundercats, uh, know him for, but I guess, you know, before he's able to wield it. So Thundercats ho, ha ha. According to this article, the new series will take a year one approach showing the Thundercats arrival on third earth and the events that shaped Lionel into the character fans know and love. So, and again, like I said, there is a, so some preview pages in this article. If you are interested in checking that out. And with that folks, uh, that brings us to the end of the news and, uh, the start of the last ad read. Right. Our last ad read of the night is to, Help us keep our podcast free by shopping at Amazon. Visit cspn.us, then click the Keep Our Podcast Free link at the top of the page. From there, scroll down and click on the Amazon link to shop. Purchase items from Amazon as you normally would, whether it's books, music, electronics, jewelry, apparel, or Marvel Legends. For every purchase made on Amazon through our link, Amazon sends the CSPN a payment... That helps us keep the Comic Book Chronicles podcast free for our listeners at no extra cost to you. Amazon.com through CSPN.us. Do it today. All righty, folks. That brings us to the end of another show. A um, little housekeeping note. We will... Uh, well, we will record an episode next week, uh, as far as we know at this point, but it will probably will not be on Thursday night as uh, there is an, a prior engagement. Yes, sir. <laughs> that may have it, something to do with uh, something mentioned. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Early in the show. It's an, ongoing, it's an ongoing season. We'll put it that way. Yes, indeed. Um, um, it's an and, ongoing uh, season. Potentially anime-like uh, shenanigans will be hopefully had. Right. Um, but probably not, you know. <laughs> ah. um, Listen, it involves a lot of jumping, running, stopping, and starting. True. But, you know, you know, with the, the power-up will not be as, as grand, I'm sure, and the, the, the digging in for the second wind, uh, right. you know, won't go two or three episodes. <laughs> right, 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 right. Type situation. So yeah, two or three there, minutes maybe, but yeah, exactly. So there is that. But hey, like I said, like always, you can um kind of uh, stay tuned to our social medias to get that uh, you know, get when we do go live, and uh, which will go as follows. You can follow me at Radicat uh, on Twitter, uh, uh, News Nice Need on Twitter, CB Caps on Instagram. Agent underscore 70 on Twitter and Instagram and threads. 
threads. And the rest of the, these folks, you could just, you know, you can check out and follow if you want to, but you're not going to hear anything from there about this particular podcast. But yeah. PCN underscore dirt on Twitter, Pop Culture Net on Twitter, Pop Culture Net, uh, Pop Culture Network dot com is on the Brutal site there in. And Tim D O G G nine eight on Twitter, CB Cron on Twitter, which is the Comic Book Chronicles Twitter account, uh, the Click Nation on Twitter. Uh, theclicknation.com that's T-H-E-K-L-I-Q-N-A-T-I-O-N and last but definitely not least he is over at comicbook.com where he's over there writing his face off you can find this here podcast on the coast of the podcast network that's cspn.us do it today uh, you can also find us on your podcast principal place of choice, whether it be Google Play, Apple iTunes, aka Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or the Coastal of the Podcast Network SoundCloud page. Make sure to click like, subscribe, and leave us all the positive <clears throat> five-star reviews. They really help, especially on Apple Podcasts. And you can find us uh, streaming every week, mostly on Thursdays, 9.30 Eastern Standard Time, on the click nation's youtube channel that's youtube.com slash the click nation and twitch.tv slash comic book chronicles where uh there's going to be some video games uh, of the comic book variety uh or adjacent variety streaming fairly soon there it is make sure to click like subscribe hit that notification button so you know when we're on live <laughs> kind of had a theme going on that was going to mirror the MCU, but I was like, I'm not going to do, do that. I'm just going to pl kind of play it by ear because there's some off stuff that uh, I've been coming across. It's like, ooh, that would be a torture to play, but I guess I will do it. <laughs> as well as some good stuff. So we'll see how it works out. Um, and uh, with that, folks, this is it for this here podcast. Uh, this has been the Cumberland Chronicles. Peace. Peace one. Wakanda forever!